Boeing 777X, Saudi at 787-10. This airline just launched a month ago, Egypt Air. And you're back here again. A320 P2F, Riyadh Air, Tony Douglas, Etihad 787, converted 777-300ER, at the new Dubai Heli Park today. We're gonna fly on the Air Shuttle helicopter behind over the Dubai Air Show site. What an overview from the top. Welcome back to Boeing 777X. Let's go check it out. Mike, very experienced pilot from F-18 to 777X. 26 shows demonstrating on the planes. This is your final show this time? Yes, today. And tell me, how many G's you pull? The limit today is two G's, and we're going to pull right to two G's. Two G's. And Not you have a, a lot G meter, of... I heard. You have a, G, have a G meter in your cockpit. Allow us to fly precisely, yeah. At the cockpit of the 777X, Captain Heather Ross, I heard you have some cool cameras because the wingspan, the length of this airplane, right? Could you yes. show us? Absolutely. Yeah, so in order to make taxiing just a little bit easier for the crew, we have uh, the ground camera display that's available. Um, and this really helps the crew uh, have situational awareness about where their gear are when they're taxiing. So the blue lines indicate the outboard portion of the main landing gear so that when the airplane's taxiing, uh, you can see where the gear is in comparison to where the edge of the runway is, or the edge of the taxiway is, so you can make sure that you stay on the run, uh, the taxiway. And where is the folding wing tip? I remember uh, you showed me one time. Very important, right this here. This is the one. Right, so you activate it by pulling the switch out, rotating it to the extend, and then the display here, which says folded in white with the folded wing tips, will go to a green extended text, and the little wing tips will show extended, and the symbol will go green. John, would you give us a program update? Uh, yeah, so the flight test program is going uh, humming along. We have over 3,000 flight hours and about over 1,000 cycles as well. Uh, right now, our most pressing milestone is looking for that type inspection and authorization, uh, which is where we get the FAA on board, and we begin our flight certification efforts, uh, which gets us close to EIS. Uh, so we're really excited. The flight team here, our flight test crew, is super excited. Uh, we have four airplanes in the fleet to accelerate the test, the test schedule and we anticipate EIS in 2025. You, you're lucky, you get to fly the 777 going <laughs> everywhere, right? What yeah. does this station do? I see you watch the copy of a camera here. Yeah, so this is an instrumentation rack. We basically monitor the data system here. Um, so all these racks have different equipment and we overlook it during flight to see if um, something's wrong or like if something goes wrong, we have to troubleshoot it, fix the problem Im immediately so we can continue testing. Sometimes we do like different types of testing. We do LMS testing, which is like lateral motion stability testing. We do brakes testing. I need to get a feel of like what the plane's doing in each section.
We're in the queue waiting to get a photo with UAE 2 astronaut Hassa and Sultan. Both of them have been to the space. Very exciting here at Dubai Air Show. Hi, man. Hi, Hassan. Good to see you again. Yes, yeah, yeah, I was going to show you. We met each other in uh, 21. And you're back here again. You remember, huh? Yeah, I remember you. Of course, you're pulling mini Gs as a pilot. Then you are now going zero G in the space. And Sultan, I just want to ask you, you've been to the space over 100 days. What does it feel like 100 days away from Earth? I think after a uh, couple of weeks it feels just like home. So yeah, it was just like home for the six months. And uh, what's the next? Go to the moon for both of you, Hassan and Sultan. Why not? Yeah, why yes. not? Yeah, go to, to the, the moon, moon and go beyond. To Mars if you have the capability and the time and the health. Let's go check out some new airplane. First one we're gonna see, Saudi F787-10. This is a cool refuge from way from the heat at the air show, all green cabin, green livery. Tell me all the reason behind this new branding. So Sam and our new brand, we were inspired by the Saudi culture. We, as you can see, there is the color of our flag, our sky, our land. In this uh, brand, we wanted to touch the senses of our passenger. The music you're hearing was played by a local instrument. The smell you're smelling, the scent is, is inspired by Al-Ulya. Al-Ulya, yeah. I just been there. <laughs> and our uh, cuisine was, uh, you can see, uh, there's more than 30 dish that was inspired by the Saudi cuisine. And here you can watch our latest in-flight entertainment system, Beyond, which is also emphasi emphasizes on the Saudi culture. at the Saudi Chalet. Let's go in for a digital journey together. Hi Sam, welcome to Saudi Air Group Pavilion. Let me take you through our exhibition area. Um, so first off, we have the Saudi Air Group ecosystem. So Saudi Air Group is comprised of 12 different companies. And we have a collective fleet of 181. You can try Fly Adil, the low cost airline, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, 23 million passengers. So, Sam, let's explore our Jeddah hub. Jeddah hub. So, Jeddah wow. hub is King, Inter uh, King Abdelaziz International Airport in Jeddah, and Saudi Group is heavily investing in it to make it a global hub. It's comprised of different facilities. So, of course, we have the airport. Uh, the airport, we have, if you would like to see, Al Fursan Lounge. Oh, the lounge, you can Which see. is the biggest Sky Team uh, lounge um, in the region. A lot of things, Saudia Technique. Saudia Technique. Saudia Technique is currently building um, the biggest MRO village in the MENA region. I don't think you have this kind of seat yet on the Saudi airplane. Yes, this is for our A321 XLR version. As you can see, it's very spacious and also it has more privacy. This the door suite. can be closed. Close. Yes. And also what's special body. about it, it has a companion area. Actually, you can host someone here inside. If you would like to eat with someone, host someone, have a meeting on board, you're good to go. Very cool, very cool. On a narrow body, you're going to have suites as well with closing doors. Yes. This airline just launched a month ago. They have all business hours cabin flying to Maldives. Let's go inside, check them out. Just got on board. I have to say, the reality looks much better than what I've expected. I've seen computer images when the first leisure all business class airline rolled out their imagery. But when I came on board, I love the furnishing 
and uh, it has this premium feel and good details. Congratulations, many years of hard working, finally fly off the line now. The big question is when and where you're going to fly. We are looking forward to have the inaugural flights this week, uh, starting with Munich, Riyadh, and then Zurich. So those are the first three destinations. And then obviously with the more aircraft, we will be expanding to the other destinations. You said more aircraft, so what kind of aircraft is in your plan that will be joining you? We will stick with the 320 family. So we are looking at the 321 LRs. We try to go for 32 aircraft within five years. I know that it's quite an ambitious challenge given the current uh, supply chain, but that's our target. And that's what the uh, shareholders have been committing to. And that would bring 60 destinations around the world to the Maldives. So I think a lot of people are already looking at the fares, right? How expensive to travel on the all leisure premium business class flight like this, round trip from Europe to Maldives? Well, we are looking to be a price leader. So on average, we are looking to charge four to $5,000 on a return trip. So here's a little behind the scenes, right? Getting, knowing the crew, they're excited. First flying two days to Munich. But you guys are brand new or you work in the industry behind this before? Before we do work, all of the cabin crew has a lot of experience in great companies. Which airlines you guys worked in before? Maldivian Airlines. Maldivian Airlines. And you? Etihad, Whitejets, and Azul. Azul, companies. Brazilian. Yeah. Yes. So you're from Brazil? Yes, I'm from Brazil. I just flew uh, oh, Azul. That's amazing. And Etihad's that's amazing. almost my hometown airline. That's great. And you? I flew for Qatar Airways and Emirates as well. Wow, and I wish you guys a great first journey. Cargo war has become so important during COVID, keeping all the supply lines logistic open. And now I'm standing just outside the world's first A320 P2F passenger to freighter. I'm with the CEO Prada near here. Shall we go have a tour Let's inside? Let's have a tour inside. Yeah. Okay, I'll follow you, sir. Well, I'm in the cargo world. There's this little hole in front of 320. Now it's the whole cargo hole here. Of course, yes. How many pallets there is can hold inside a 320 P2F? That there are almost 11 pallets, uh, 11 PMCs uh, in this freighter with a full capacity of 19.5 tons. How long it took to convert one of these 320 so from passenger to freighter? It takes almost six to eight months for the conversion. The conversion happened in, back in Singapore at uh, the ST engineering setup, and uh, it's, it's almost six months for the conversion of this aircraft. Got on board is Egypt Air 321 Neo, brand new airplane at Dubai Air Show. With me is the Egypt Air Chairman and CEO, Engineer Yahia. Now, this is not your first A321 Neo. Yeah, fact, it's, a, it's number seven. In fact, we had received seven 321. This is the last one. This is the most newest one. 16 business class. And How many? One, 166. 166. Yeah. So only 182 seats. Yes. I heard you order some airplanes. Tell us the announcement you made here I by Airship. I just signed an order or a deal, very big deals with uh, Airbus for acquiring a 10 C50-900, which will join the fleet at uh, 2025, the first three, up to 2027. Yesterday, we signed an order for 18 Maxes for lease with the biggest leasing company in the, in the world, which is ALC. I think you know, Steven has one of the biggest resources. The pressing question everyone wants to know is, has the current Middle East conflict affected your carrier, Egypt? We can say just a little bit. You can, we can say also that Egypt is destinations. Everybody is like to go to Egypt. So, so the, 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 the effect effectiveness of the conflicts in the, in the regions, we can say we monitored just a little, a little, very little change in the uh, reservation. Some of the reservations have been canceled, but uh, it's still, it's still the potentials of flying to Egypt is still very
First time at Dubai Air Show, a converted 777-300ER to a freighter. We're gonna board through the cargo door. Let's go inside. I'm with Richard, head of cargo air cap. Richard, give us a bit of rundown about this huge Boeing 777-300ERSF. Well, thanks, Sam. Thanks for coming on board on this uh, great 777-ERSF freighter. We coin it the Big Twin. And because it's the Big Twin, it's the largest converted freighter with twin engines. And we think that this is gonna be the next future aircraft for air cargo for the next 15, 20 years. So as you can see, it's a bit of a cathedral and it's gonna take a lot of cargo, especially e-commerce and express. And you know, there's a lot of e-commerce uh, operators, especially in China, that are really interested in this and they're on the program already. We have other partners such as uh, Emirates that endorse the product as well. So we're really uh, encouraged by the amount of uh, customers that we have. We have uh, over 65 firm orders with uh, over 50 options as well. So this program is up and running. We expect the uh, certification to be in January 2024. And that's the first aircraft. And, uh, and the launch customer with us is Kalita Air. Um, that's a US-based operator. And they're, they're going to take the first seven. So we're very excited by it. How many cargo pallets or how much weight this airplane can carry? It, it, it's a 100 ton freighter and that's kind of the, the key uh, payload that it's going to replace the 747-400 uh, BCF and F market. And within that market there's around over 200 aircraft uh, that are actually need replacing over the next you know, 10 to 15 years. What are the range on this 777-300 yard? Can it do Trans-Pacific non-stop? Well as you can see it can do Hong Kong to Anchorage, and Hong Kong to Anchorage is a very traditional route for the air cargo operators. And as you can see here, it's just got a range of over 4,500 nautical miles at a 100 ton payload. So it's a perfect fit for the e-commerce market, which we hope to get more operators for. Looking through the screen here, I learned something. The 330 aileron, 350 inboard flaps, spoilers, and you got satellite components, and you got even the PC24, the flooring. This is all actually built in the UAE from a company called Strata. And here I'm with Sarah, one of the project manager here. Tell me more about this company. I completely missed out. I thought everything was built in Europe or America. Yes, um, so welcome to Strata. Strata is an aerostructure manufacturing company. We're based in Al Ain. We, are, uh, build, we started in 2009 with only one production line. Today, as you see, we have 30 production line manufactured in Al Ain city. And we supply to a big OEM such as Airbus, Boeing, and Pilatus. So you have components on the 787. I saw you have vertical tail feed that was telling me. Yes, yeah? it's there. Like this. Uh, this is just a model, right? This is a 3D printer model yes. of supplying the vertical tail fin. My gosh. That, there you go. See that? 787, that vertical tail fin. Made in UAE. That's incredible, incredible. But tell me more about your company. So if we're talking about the population, half of our population are presented by a female. And if we're talking about a UAE national, we are 64% UAE national, out of which 88% is the female representative. So Strata is female dominated, not anymore a male dominated industry. Seriously? Yes. Then you must have a very interesting story how you work in a company that has more female engineers than yes. male. That's very inspiring. Yes. Tell us about your story. To be honest, Strat is supporting each and every individual to be part of the aerospace industry. I started back in 2015 as an accountant. Today, after eight years, I'm heading the project management office within the company. So they are giving us the opportunity to be part of the aerospace industry, while back on time, they keep saying it's only a male-dominated field. We have this meet and greet session here and there's a lot of amazing aviators. They've been watching my content and now, like Saif, he's now almost a commercial pilot with Air Arabia. They've been growing and growing and going further and further in aviation. Yeah, I've been really enjoying it and I've been watching Sam since I was just a little kid in school and now almost commercial pilot. So it's well, I'm really happy to see everyone enjoy aviation. That's yeah. the most important. Uh, behind the YouTube and the social media you're doing, what's your, what do you want to leave a legacy in aviation or in your industry? It's a huge question. I think I haven't really thought that far, but 
you know, I think aviation is broad. And look at the opportunities here. And I felt like I want to continue my pilot. I want to learn more and see more about the pilot if I can succeed. And also, I want to get into the management side of experience as well. So I felt like you know, there's so much things can do, and I probably will just stick to one passion. That's aviation for the rest of my life. Rehire Tony Douglas, the CEO here. You just reviewed a second livery. Tell us a little bit about why you have two liveries. It's almost like a home court and a way livery. Well, look, we've got a partnership with Atletico Madrid, so we all know about home kits and away kits. But this second livery we revealed today is absolutely stunning, just like the first one behind us. We're a digital native, so how did we release it? Scan on that QR code wow. again. You can see it come up again. And obviously, it's all over social media now. There she is. And isn't that second livery absolutely beautiful? I got to make a couple of executives here at Ria Air. But Vincent Costa is Chief Commercial Officer. The biggest question I think everyone's mind is, is it commercially viable to start a new airline in Riyadh? And are you competing with Qatar Airways, Emirates, all the big Middle Eastern carriers? Thank you, Sam. Well, listen, it's absolutely viable due to the fact that we have, unlike our big competitors in the region, a huge point-to-point -point traffic. Today, the capacity of Riyadh Airport is at 93% point-to-point, and our model will not be to be a mega connector in the region, another mega connector, but to focus on this point-to-point -point traffic that brings much more value than the connecting traffic. As a result, uh, today Riyadh is a city of 8.5 million people with a maximum growth in the coming uh, years. We are going to develop a network focus on this point-to-point, -point, connecting uh, uh, Riyadh, the G20 capital, the least connected G20 capital in the world, to other countries. Where's going to be your destination? You're going to fly long haul, you have order 787, but you're also going to fly short haul, right? You're going to fly domestic as well, is that correct? Absolutely. So, our first deliveries will be white bodies, therefore we'll fly, you know, long haul, but white bodies can also fly medium haul on high volume destinations. And, and then we will fly extensively domestic, because let's not forget Saudi Arabia has 35 million people today, and it's a growing population. So we will also connect the domestic uh, airports, more than 25 airports, to the rest of the world. That's our other purpose. This ADR 787 has new product inside. Let's go check them out. I got on board, I noticed that the major change on this 78 business class is they have the doors here, right? The doors are now a fully private closed suite. Uh, similar. I think not the same, but similar to the A350, because 787 is a little bit narrower. So tell me more about what else you have changed. It seems like the whole gas experience at the ADI has moved. The first big change, this is three inches higher than the 350. So it gives you more privacy. All the suite is three inches higher. Uh, this gives you a, another experience inside. The other thing is about all the soft uh, items that you have here. You have the new mattress, you have the duvet, and you have a lot of things coming from the Armani Casa, including all the dining service. It's coming from Armani Casa as well. So this is why I love to coming to an air show, to see all the new airplane in their glorious form with all the products laid out, beautiful setups. And the first 10 rows or so on the 7-8 has extra space. They call it economy space, which gives you a bit more leg room. And also, I really like this kind of headrest, so you can kind of lean towards it. The Chief Operation Officer, Mohammed Al Baluki. Now, I want to ask you a couple of things. First, everyone's talking about a new terminal. The Terminal A has opened in Abu Dhabi. Give us an update. When are you moving to the terminal? 
So tomorrow night uh, on the 14th, our full move will happen. We've already moved our afternoon bank and our evening bank, which is our biggest bank, is going to happen at uh, on, between, say, 9 tomorrow night to about 2 in the morning on the 15th. So we're very excited about that. Uh, all our flights from the 14th will be uh, in Terminal 8. It's exciting time. So halas from the old terminal. Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, it was a great, you know, 30, 40 years to use that terminal, but it's time to move to the new home. Zayed International Airport will be recognized globally, we are sure, for its level of service, its efficiency, and its grandeur in terms of design. I know Etihad is expanding again. How many more new airplanes are getting back to the fleet? So uh, we are expecting over the next 14 months to get at least 15 aircrafts back. So there are some 777s, there are 787s, there are 320s, and uh, we hope to see the fleet expand very quickly because we have a 2030 plan that the CEO has outlined very clearly to approximately double the size by 2030 of Etihad. So today we are sitting at 80 aircraft, we'll soon be in the next 10 months at 90 aircraft. Something new at the Amherst stand. They've done away showing you the seats, hard products, but now showing you virtual cabin crew experience. Are Let's you do ready? It. Yeah. Yes, I will just give you this one as a protection. So you have a task, five minutes to prepare. Uh, I became mask of sorrow. Yeah, I can okay, see the plane. Sir. Okay, you need to physically uh, go there and open the red latches. So okay. go with your hands. Yeah, physically, sorry if I'm touching you. Yes, open. Oh, yeah. Like, do the other one as well. Yeah, this and is then, it. Ah. Yeah, only the drop. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got wow. something out. Good job. Yeah. So, oh, Take it out. Perfect. Now you can drop something inside. Did you that, enjoy it? That was quite a different experience. <laughs> <laughs> 